next on The Professional Rule Breaker. Hey everyone, this is Philip Blackett from dreambusinessmakeover.com and you're listening to The Professional Rule Breaker Podcast. So welcome back to the Professional Rule Breaker Podcast. I am your host, Kathy Walterhouse. And today I have an individual that likes to ask this question. Remember the dream that you had for your business before life happened. So my next guest, Philip Blackett, is an author. He's a consultant, he's an entrepreneur, and he has worked with FedEx, Goldman Sachs, and Chick-fil-A. And he helps businesses do something that is called a dream business makeover that is powered with AI. So I want to welcome my next guest, Philip Blackett. Thank you so much, Kathy. Happy to be here with you. I am happy to have you here. So as I mentioned, you are an author, you have several books out, but the one that caught my eye was one that I think the title is Disagree Without Disrespect. Is that right? You're right. Disagree Without Disrespect. Um, How to Respectfully Debate with Those Who Think, Believe, and Vote Differently from You. Okay. Okay. So tell me a little bit about that, because I think that's a really important concept. It can be used every day. Let's say if you work for a corporation or a small business, also just in your daily life. Cause I think right now things are really inflammatory. It's like you almost have to be really careful. It's like you're walking on eggshells when it comes to talking about topics or maybe something that you might believe in or maybe it's a direction you want your business to go that might be different so help help me understand and help my audience understand what we can do or what we can put in place yeah so i think the importance of this book is you know something i've reflected on even when i was growing up because you might have been in the same place as i was where at the dinner table when we were younger there were a few things we just did not have a conversation about. We didn't talk about politics. Right. We didn't talk about religion. Right. We didn't talk about money. Right. Those top three, politics, religion, and money. And that's definitely a no-no in business. And I'll tell you about an experience later on, but tell me a little bit more. Yeah. So I would think with those three, okay, I could jot them down. I could say, okay, now I could just remember, okay, dinner table, don't talk about those three subjects. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge is if you have a difference of opinion, not just in those three topics, but just on almost any topic now, any idea, any opinion, if you have something that's dissenting from somebody else, now you run the risk of being alienated from your family, criticized on social media, given the cold shoulder at work, or even unfriended. And so it's not as if people just now are starting to disagree that this is a new thing. Like disagreements have started from the very beginning of us being here. (laughs) But the way we go about it is a lot different from when I was growing up. And it seems like we've lost the rules of engagement where we can hear other different points of view and still respect one another and love that person, especially if they're close to us. Um, and so I thought that this book would be a helpful way to share a short, but helpful framework that anybody, whether in their homes, in the living rooms, the boardrooms, wherever the case may be, when you come across somebody of any relationship that has a difference of opinion, you're not going to necessarily cancel or silence them just because they have a difference. It's more of how do you engage with them and preserve what I would say is something vastly needed in our society, which is diversity of thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I totally agree. I, you know, as you're talking, I just have this very vivid recollection of an episode that I had, but this was during a time, this was a few years back. It was during a time where 
people weren't getting canceled so easily, I should say, <laughs> more than anything else. And you could have like open type discussions, but even then in the business world, you know, it was those top things. Don't talk about religion. Don't talk about politics. Don't talk about money. I was actually in the midst of negotiating a really large deal. I think it was over $60 million. And the CEO of this publicly traded company that I worked for at that time wanted to meet with the CEO of the company that we were working this deal with. And I'm not going to tell you the company, and I'm definitely not going to tell you the name <laughs> of the person because it is a well-known company, a well known name. I'm with him with all his security, introducing him to the CEO of uh, this other company. And one of the first things that comes out of his mouth is, see, I'm even trying to be a little politically correct here <laughs> on what I'm going to say, but it was one of those. So are you going to be voting for this person for president? Like, I think my jaw probably dropped with this oh, like moment, <laughs> because even back then, that was kind of a rule you never really violated. But lucky for me, I knew these people, you know, my client very, very well. So I quickly kind of just shifted the conversation. We, you know, we kind of joked about it for a few seconds, and then I shifted the conversation around, you know, away from that. But I think... Even then there were some limitations on what you should and you shouldn't talk about, but that didn't cause a big fight. It didn't cause anything. But I think now, I mean, I know people with family members that no longer speak to each other because they might be on the opposite sides of like maybe even the political spectrum. And to me, that's like really, really sad. So. Can you give us just a couple little ideas, a couple little steps that maybe people can implement like in their business or wherever it might be in their life that would be really helpful to them? Sure. So I think when I think about that question, I go back to the primary framework of the book where it's a simple five steps. It's simple to say, maybe a little more challenging for one to implement, but it's definitely worth a try if you value the relationships in your life. So the first one is separate the idea or belief from the identity of the believer. That's why, right. that's in, why that's important, Kathy, is, you know, a lot of times, depending on the issue, the idea or belief, you might come across someone that's very intertwined with that idea that they have basically become one, and that is who he or she is. And so the challenge with that is if you disagree with that idea, they may take of it as you're disagreeing with who they are. Or if you criticize that idea, now they take it personal and think you're being critical or hating on them. So if you're able to separate the idea from the identity of the believer, your next step is to disagree with the idea or belief and still love the believer. So it's kind of a play on the phrase, hate the sin, love the sinner. Yes, absolutely. So, so what's happening now is I'm I'm basically separating the idea and saying to you, Kathy, like, I still care about you. I'm just talking about the idea that you believe in. Yeah. And me criticizing or being dis in disagreement with that idea does not have me look at you any way negatively because my respect or love for you is not contingent on whether or not I agree with you here. Yeah. One of the things my mom taught me was that, you know, Philip, just because I disagree with you, that does not mean that I don't love you. Yeah. And even though that's a mother-son interaction, that's a similar belief or principle you can take to any relationship mm -hmm. that my respect and love for you is not contingent on whether I agree with you or not. Otherwise, you know, I've been married for eight years. My wife and I don't agree on everything. If that was the case, we would have been divorced a long time ago. Right. <laughs> so, you know, once you kind of set the framework there with the person you're talking to, you just debate the idea at hand based on its merit. Okay. No, I, I agree. I, I agree. Hey there, you know. I am all about making a big difference. So I am so excited 
about announcing our podcast sponsor for today. They are the very last U.S. family-owned manufacturer of consumer goods products. And best of all, their products are healthier and safer for you and just really amazing quality. And you know, I can do all the things that I do if I really wasn't health conscious. So this is very near and dear to my heart because they are healthier and safer for you. And best of all, they will not break the bank. So if you're interested in finding out more information and switching your shopping to something that is non-toxic and healthier for you, go to switchaway.com forward slash rule breaker and one of my friends will reach out to you and just let's work all together to see if we can make an impact and switch to healthier and safer products and of course supporting small businesses so again drop your information at switchaway.com forward slash rule breaker i love that because that has a lot of different applications. I can particularly think about, I know you may think this might be a little strange, but I think about in the sales world. I mean, there's different types of sales, right? You can do these bigger sales, you can do direct marketing, you can do internet type sales as well. But I think about the times where maybe the sale doesn't go through for whatever reason. Right. And you start wondering, or maybe even sometimes having a little bit of an angst against the customer, like, oh, they didn't understand me or they don't like me or whatever it might be. But if you kind of take your approach where you kind of step back and you're like, okay, I still really want to have this relationship with them. I still want to continue down this path because you never know, you can sell them something else instead. And so you're not going to hate them for not agreeing with you at that moment in the thing that it is that you're trying to sell to them. So I think a lot of your principles really have like multiple uses, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yes, it does. Yeah interesting like so interesting but i think even just those top two i think if we take those and put them into play um, another example i can think of is let's say you have a brilliant idea in your company and nobody gets it <laughs> right nobody gets it and people are disagreeing with you you know again putting in phillips framework can really help I mm -hmm. think in that as well, just because they may not agree with you doesn't mean it's not somebody you want to work with. Right. So I think one of the things that comes off, Kathy, is do we place a priority or a higher value on the relationship at stake? Or are we more concerned with being right? Mm. Right. So I know I'm not giving like, you know, relationship advice here. But I would say if you were to argue that every person you interact with, there's some sort of relationship, personal, professional, family, colleague, acquaintance, that sort of thing, there is a relationship involved. And so the thought that comes off here is, are you looking at any sort of disagreement as I have to prove my point to be superior and right over this person? I have to win at all costs? Or is it more so a sense that that person's disagreement may actually be a gift because that person's sharing what his or her honest feelings are on that issue, what their perspective is, maybe the backstory behind it. And they're being vulnerable and sharing that with you and how you basically deal with that gift will play a role in as far as how much more conversations you'll have post that topic and what type of relationship you will have post that encounter. Yeah, mic drop moment. Absolutely, definitely. And because there's so, again, so many applications for it. And I know that one of the things that you do is you do like a dream makeover with businesses 
And I bet one of the things that you may even find is that people may have, you know, they've been doing something for so long in a certain way. It's a bit of a tunnel vision effect. Mm -hmm. And you may come in there with like a new idea and it's that same thing. Would they rather build their business or would they rather be, just be right? Mm -hmm. um, same type of thing. So tell me a little bit about this dream makeover that you help businesses with. Right. So how I go about this, Kathy, is, you know, I've been a business owner myself. I've run a seven figure services business before for a number of years. I've hired people, fired people, laid off people. I've gone through up economic times, down economic times, through a pandemic and that sort. And I say all that with the sense of I've been in a business owner's shoes before. I've had to make tough decisions. The goal with the business is to create something that can hopefully provide for yourself, but also for the people you employ, also for their families, as well as yours. You also like to see it grow and achieve some sort of dream scenario that you had when you first started the business. And so, as you were saying at the intro of this was, you know, yes, every business owner has a dream of where their business wants to go. And then life happens. <laughs> Certain things that you weren't anticipating when you came up with that business plan all of a sudden pop up out of nowhere like a whack-a-mole that you now have to take time to whack this mole. And the moment you get this fire quenched, another one pops up. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, just like you were saying before, you're so caught in the day-to-day -day operations of the business that you lost track of where you are in relation to where you want your business to go. And so where my role is, is really being able to be another set of eyes, another set of ears from somebody that they feel like can understand their perspective because entrepreneurship, you know, can be a lonely road, especially if you're captaining the ship on this one. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to say, hey, like, let's sit down and map out where you're trying to go, where you're trying to grow into, give you some time to actually think clearly, think openly. And how do you want to grow your sales? How do you want to grow your profits? Do you want to grow via mergers and acquisitions? How do you want to grow your exit value? Meaning at some point in time, whether you're going to give this business off to maybe family or sell it or have it employ your own, there's some sort of end goal that you want to achieve, which has a value to it. When you exit, how do we get to that point? And so once we're able to see that as far as where you are currently and where you're trying to go, now we can work in the middle to figure out what is it going to take us working together and with artificial intelligence too, to help get you to where you're trying to go. Yeah. So you mentioned AI. So let's talk about AI. Because uh, I think AI can even be controversial sometimes. I personally think AI is a great plus to businesses. It can make you more efficient. It allows you to do the things that you should be doing rather than all the stuff that you shouldn't be doing. But I'd love to get your take on AI. Sure. AI is what I would say this new generation's internet, mm -hmm. right? So when I was growing up, dial-up internet was the new thing. It was a new technology similar to the actual telephone similar to the automobile, yep. right? And oftentimes they can be controversial. I get it because we often fear what we don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. You know, take for example, ride sharing. Did you ever think 20 years ago that you would have a day where you can get on the phone and not call a cab, but have a random car that a stranger is driving and you're gonna get in the car with that stranger you never met before to take you to a place that you asked it to go and not kidnap you. Right, exactly. Because I mean, that was a big change, right? It's a change in mentality. Right. And so that's the type of thing where it's like, this is similar. This is something that we're still just getting to know as far as what this AI is about. It comes in many facets, many forms. It's not just a one face of what this looks like. And it's only going to keep getting better and more advanced literally by the day, right? But the challenge that comes out of that is really asking yourself the question, 
are you going to see this AI as more of an opportunity for you to grow with it? Or are you going to see it as a threat that you should ignore or step away from Oof. at the risk of getting left behind? Yeah. I think if you don't embrace AI right now, you're going to be left behind. And I hate to say that, but I really feel that it's true. Um, I do remember the days when the internet first came out and a lot of people were very, very afraid of it. And it was the same type of almost thing. They were like, the machines are going to take over <laughs> the world. And AI, I totally agree with you, is just like the internet. It probably was just like so many other great inventions that at one time really served a really great purpose, you know, like the telephone and your home phone or even gosh, there's so many things that have changed just in my lifetime that at one time we never thought it was going to go away. And then the new stuff comes out. And so AI definitely is something new. So what would you advise people? I would guess on a simple way to implement AI into your business. Sure. So the, the first step I would say is look at this from a mindset approach. Do you look at AI as an opportunity to help you become more productive and more profitable and grow with it? Or do you see this as a fad, a threat, or something that should be ignored? If you choose the latter, then there's not much more I can say to help you here. Yeah. If you choose the former and think it's an opportunity to grow with it, then the next step I would say is take an honest inventory of all that you do in your business. Mm-hmm all the different jobs you do on a day-to-day -day basis. First step, what are the jobs that you feel confident that you can do better than anybody else on your team? You can't outsource it. It has to be you. You're the CEO. You're the owner. You have to have your footprint on it. You have to be, have your hands on this. Okay. That may be everything that your business does. It may not. For those that that's not the case, that somebody could do it for you. You could outsource it to somebody that can do it at least 80% as well as you can, if not better. You can now look at those jobs as something that either, yes, the old way of looking at it is you hire somebody else to do it. Now it's, can you have AI do it? And the trick part about AI is AI doesn't take a day off. <laughs> AI <laughs> does it. <laughs> AI doesn't go to sleep, Kathy. AI doesn't, you know, get sick. AI doesn't wake up one day and say, "Hey, I I wonder what it would look like if I apply myself for another company <laughs> when they least expect it." I wonder what else is out there. Right? So, this is something that is a tool that can work for you around the clock without rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Without the rebellion, because it will do it for you. It's no longer, it's not the Terminator that right. you see out there in the movies. It's really something that can help you right? just so, do things faster. Yeah. And so I think the big thing on that, Kathy, is for those parts of the job, experiment. Try some things out, research, see what type of tools do the same type of things that you're looking to do and try it out and see what makes sense. Treat it almost like a buffet. You know, if you go to the buffet, you try certain things, you like certain things, you didn't like certain things, and you come back for seconds for the things you liked. Same thing, certain AI tools work well for your business and, you know, the different fields, whether it's marketing or sales, operations, finance, and that sort. The ones you like, keep doing it. Learn more about how you can take it to the next level and grow with it. The ones you didn't like, try something else. But just have this growth mindset to keep growing with it, learning about AI, learning about the different tools, networking and meeting people that are trying to figure this out just with you at the same time as well. And over time, while AI is evolving and getting better, you are also getting better and evolving with it so that your business is growing with AI rather than dying without it. That's right.
That's right. I mean, it, I think AI is really important, exactly what you said. And finding the tools that will work for you. I do think sometimes people can go down this, I would almost call it like an AI foxhole, right? Where they try a bunch of different tools. I think you have to maybe focus on the ones that may work for you and your business. It's always interesting, you know, to see, and maybe even just talk with other people, like for example, yourself. I mean, I think you're a great resource, especially for your clients, because you'll be able to say, use these certain things because these tools are going to be the ones that can help you. I was speaking yesterday with a friend of mine who actually was one of the original testers for OpenAI. And it's, it was really interesting that we kind of had come to a couple of the same conclusions because I asked him a couple of tool type questions. I said, you know, I stopped using this one because of X. <laughs> and he's like, that's exact same thing that he found. And yet he's one of these people that are in the forefront and really know a lot more about AI than anybody else. But I think it's really great for people to have resources like you because you're helping business owners really reach the next level using AI. Absolutely. That's definitely the goal here. Let me ask you, where can people find you? Sure. So, you know, my website that I oftentimes lead business owners and entrepreneurs to learn more about me and the dream business makeovers we do for clients powered by AI is going to our website, dreambusinessmakeover.com. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Also, um, if they wanted to learn more about me, they can go to my personal website at philipblackett.com, P-H-I-L-I-P-B-L-A-C-K-E-T-T.com. They can learn more about me. What do I do? Um, some of the books that I've written in that sort too. Uh, and also, I'm also on social media as well. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to have all of your links available in the show notes and everywhere that we post. I do have a question though, Philip, for you, because I want to know this. What makes you a rule breaker? Sure. So um, for me, part of the subtitle of my book, Think Differently, it's personal to me to some degree because I'm speaking to you as someone who is on the autism spectrum. And so part of that comes off in a sense of having a lifetime of seeing things differently, processing what I see, what I come across differently than others to offer a different perspective. And oftentimes that means not necessarily conforming to the rules at hand. And so now I think about it, you know, on this next, what I used to think was most important when it comes to success, which was more by, based on prestige, based on ego, based on like the outside of what people see that's filtered on Instagram and those type of places. Yes. I think at this point for me, now that I'm a father of two, I'm married, um, it's more focused on enjoying my life with the people I love the most. And that's what for my family. It, I definitely want to have an impact and a legacy for others um, within my community and those that I happen to have a positive influence on that I you know, encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. But I think that that barometer of where I see success is the type of impact and love I'm sharing with my family, being able to provide for them, not just financially, but being there for, for dinner, uh, playing tag with my daughters, growing my relationship with my wife and just helping instill the right type of values and principles for our kids in a way that we feel proud to look on as we get older. Absolutely. I think that's a great definition of success is exactly what it is that you're doing. It's not necessarily about all the glory, but it's really about how your life is and are you doing the things that you really want to do. So I, I really want to thank you for being a guest on our show. And as I mentioned, if you're in business and looking for some help, be sure to check out Philip's 
website and we'll be sure to have all his information in the show notes. And then for everyone that's out there that's listening, I hope that this episode was really helpful for you in kind of navigating when you are dealing with different personalities. And if you're in the business world, you're definitely going to be dealing with different personalities, people that you may not always agree with. But I think Philip gave us some really great strategies on what to do there. And if you implement those, you can keep on going. And remember, you're special. There's only one of you. So take your talents and put it out there in the world like no one else can and make a big difference in the world. So if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to give us a five-star review. And for everyone listening, keep on breaking the rules. Thank you.